Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we are given an array of size n containing distinct integers from 1 till n. We are also given an integer k where k lies in the range from 1 till n. And we have to return the number of subarrays where the median is equal to k. The median of an array is the middle element when the array is sorted in ascending order. And in the case where the array is of even length, there will be two middle elements but we will have to take the left one. For example, if we write this array in ascending order, 2 and 3 will be the middle elements but we will have to take 2 as the median of the array. In the given example, our median has to be 4. The subarray is 4, 1, 4, 5 and 4, 5 will have 4 as the median. So the answer is 3. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's try to understand more about this problem by taking this small example. Here the median has to be 3 and the total number of elements are 5. So all the numbers will be in the range from 1 to 5. Let's try to understand which subarrays will have k as the median. For any subarray to be a valid one, we have to check these three properties. For k to be the median in a subarray, k definitely has to belong to that subarray. Hence, k must be included. These are some valid subarrays which include k. And this subarray which does not include k can never have k as the median. So this is invalid. The length of the subarrays can either be even or it can be odd. In the case of odd length subarrays, if we sort the numbers in ascending order, k should lie exactly in the middle. Hence there should be an equal count of numbers which are lesser than k and also greater than k. Some of these valid subarrays are, in all these cases, the count of the numbers which are lesser than k is equal to the count of numbers which are greater than k. This also includes the subarray where k is the only element. Here the count of both lesser and greater numbers is 0. Hence they are equal. In the case of even length subarrays, if we sort the array in ascending order, k should be the left middle element. So there will be one extra element to the right of k as compared to the left of k. Hence the count of numbers lesser than k plus 1 should be equal to the count of numbers greater than k. For example, these are some subarrays where this condition is valid. Let's try to understand our previous concept using this example. Our median is 4 and hence it must be included. And we have to find subarrays extending on the left and the right side from this median. And the subarrays formed this way should satisfy the conditions regarding the count of lesser and greater numbers than the median. So we need to come up with a way to do that efficiently. Since we are checking if both these counts are equal or the count of the larger numbers is more than the count of the smaller numbers by 1, we can store the difference of the count of the larger and the smaller numbers. Coming up with this is the most challenging part of this problem. Let's see how it would look. We'll start from a median k. Over here the count of both of them is the same. Hence we'll store the difference as 0. Going to the right our next number is smaller. And so far we haven't seen any greater number. The difference would be minus 1. Our next number is greater than k. So it would balance out the smaller number. Hence the difference would be 0. Our next two numbers are greater. Hence the difference would be 1 and 2 respectively for them. We'll do the same thing on the left side. And finally this is how the differences of the count of the smaller and the greater numbers would look. Ideally we only need to pre-calculate the differences for one side. For the other side we could calculate the balances on the fly and try to match them up with the balances on the other side. In this example, let's go to the left side from our median element and try to pair it up with some difference on the right side. The first number going left would be the median 4 itself. Its balance is 0. For the odd length subarrays, we'll try to match it up with difference as 0 because it would make the count of the lesser and the greater numbers equal. 
we find one index where the difference is zero and that will represent the subarray for itself. So we'll increase the result by one. Similarly, we have another index with difference zero. This would represent the subarray 436. We'll increase our result by one. Now we'll try to make subarrays of even length. The count of the greater numbers should be one more than the count of the smaller numbers. Difference at four is zero. We need one extra greater element. Hence the difference we are looking for is one. It would be this subarray and we'll increase our result by one. Now we'll include the next element on the left. Its difference is minus one. For odd length subarrays, to balance out the one extra smaller number on the left, we have to find one extra larger number on the right. Hence we are looking for the difference one. This would be the subarray and we'll increase our result by one. For the even length subarrays, we need one extra greater number. So the difference we are looking for is two. This would be the subarray and we'll increase the result by one. Now we'll include the next element on the left. Its difference is minus two. For the odd length subarrays, the difference on the right we are looking for is two. This would be the subarray and we'll increase the result by one. For the even length subarrays, the difference we are looking for on the right is 3. We cannot find that difference, hence we'll move on. Now we'll include the last element on the left. Its difference is minus 1. For the odd length subarrays, the difference we are looking for is 1. This would be the subarray. We'll again increase the result by 1. And for the even length subarrays, the difference we are looking for is 2. This would be that subarray and our result will increase by 1. So we'll return 8 as the answer. We have to maintain the differences on the right and we are only concerned with the number of times that difference has occurred. So the best data structure for that would be a hash map where the key would be the difference and the value would be the count. The time complexity of this would be O of n because we only have to go through all the numbers only once. And the space complexity would be O of n because we are using a hash map of size n. Let's implement our solution. Let's keep a variable for the length of the array. We'll have to find the position at which our median occurs. We'll use the index function for that. Let's define a hash map to store the differences and their counts. Initially, we'll set our balance to be zero. We'll first go through all the numbers from the median till the end to the right. We'll store our current number in a variable. For each number we'll have to update the balance. If our current number is greater than the median, then we'll increase the balance by 1. And if it is smaller than the median, we'll decrease the balance by 1. And if we are at the median itself, then we'll not change the balance. Now we'll increase the count of that balance by 1. After this loop, we are done with the pre-calculation of the balances for the right side. We'll initialize our result to be 0 and we'll also reset our balance to 0. Now we'll go through all the elements from the median till our 0th index from right to left direction. For going from right to left, we are using the reversed function. We'll store our current number in a variable. We'll reuse the same logic for updating our balance. If our current number is greater, then we'll increase the balance by 1. If it is smaller, then we'll decrease the balance by 1. If it is the median itself, we'll do nothing. First, we'll try to create a subarray of odd length. For that, we'll be pairing it up with negative of our balance on the right side. And whatever be the count of such balances on the right, we'll increase our result by that. For the event length subarray, we need one extra greater element. So we'll be looking for the negative of our balance plus 1. For example, our current balance is minus 2. It means we have two extra smaller elements on the left. So we are ideally looking for three extra greater elements on the right. Our current formula would work in this case. And let's say our current balance is 2. This means we have two extra greater elements on the left. So we should ideally be looking for one extra smaller element on the right. So our desired balance is minus one. Hence our formula works in both the cases. 
and finally we'll increase the result by the number of pairs we can find. After going through all the elements, we can return our answer. Let's submit our solution. As you can see, our solution is accepted. If you have any doubts or concerns regarding this solution, please mention in the comments. If you thought this video was helpful, please support this channel by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.